welcome back from the break. Time to get crafty. Crafty Aggie has an amazing craft prepared for us. Could you guess what it is? Well, let's get to it. Hi kids! Welcome to yet another episode of Let's Get Crafty. My name is Crafty Aggie and today I'm going to show you how to make a ladybug out of Play-Doh. All you need for this project is of course Play-Doh. Optional are googly eyes and a ruler. So let's get started. You can pick any color. Uh, let me just remove all of them from this pack. Ooh, they were sticky. Yeah, good. All of them have come off. So we also want to remove this white strip like this. Then we are left with this. Okay, so we pick a color. I choose red. So free it from the rest of its friends. And then roll it up into a ball. You can also use the, your surface like this. So whichever, in between your palms or against the surface like this. So you want to make a ball sort of like a ball, then flatten it out. Like this. Then we want to remove it. That's the body of the ladybug. Then now we want to go ahead and just remove chunks, just small chunks from this black Play-Doh or any other color that you'd want. And then what we want to do is we want to make the upper or the front part of the bag. So we place it like that. So the ruler was meant for cutting, just in case you want to be more neat, like this. So that's why we had a ruler on set. So after doing that, we want to divide this. Okay, we can use this entire strip. So we roll it. We want to make the wings of our ladybug. So right from here, like that, the first one. And then from here, then we cut it off. Like that and then now we want to go on making those beautiful dots that a ladybug usually has so these are mini dots using the black play-doh like this then let's add another one here where the wings separate And then of course we have the googly eyes for the eyes but let me show you another way of making eyes with your play-doh so you work with a small ball of black play-doh and then work with an even smaller ball then you just stick it there like that then you can place it right there onto your bag then again. Like that, or instead you can go with your googly eyes and just stick them on top there. So this is how our ladybug looks like. So I just want to flatten these spots together with the eyes as well. Like that. You can even add fillers. Let's go ahead and add fillers. So we want to make them as similar as possible. So we add 
the filler in the opposite end like this. And we are done. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host Crafty Aggie. This has been Let's Get Crafty. See you all next time. Bye. You know what mud and boots mean. You guessed it right. What Toto Shambani. This week we visited a different farm and let's see what they had for us. And also pay keen attention because we'll be having a quiz afterwards. It could just be the one with the right answer. Hi children, do you have a school garden? Today, students from McKinney School will be planting in this school garden. This is grade 6 and this is McKinney Middle School. We, have, we like farming and this is our small farm inside our own school, as you can see. We are still within the school. And here we have grade six. Yes. Yeah, we have grade six ready students here. They like farming and they are ready to learn. But before we proceed, what is this? This is? Watoto Shambani. This is? Watoto Shambani. We'd like one of our learners here to tell us what we learned about in grade five. Who can tell us what we learned about in grade five? Yes, this Mulchi. Yes? Mulchi. We learned about mulchi. What else can we do? We learned about climbing. Fruit plants. Yeah, climbing fruit trees. <laughs> climbing fruit trees. Okay, I can see several hands up. Yes? Shading. We also learned about shading. Yes? We read about read about four different types of soil erosion. Yeah, okay, thank you. We've also learned about different types of soil erosion. But right now here, in grade six, we are learning about two different types of crops. Those crops that grow along the ground. I don't know if one of us has a name for them. Yes, Malaika? Creeping crops. Yes, they are called creeping crops. Creeping crops. They are called creeping crops because they grow along the ground. Their stems grow along the ground. And we have several examples. I just need two examples. Just two examples. One, Ali. We have watermelons. They are creeping crops. And uh, PJ, we also have pumpkin. And here with us today, we also happen to have some of those. We have some pumpkin seeds. These are pumpkin seeds, although we are planting them later, not now. And in also in grade six, we also do something about legume crops. Legume crops. It is a man, is one of the when we learn about gardening practices, we are learning about legume crops. Who can give me some of the examples of legumes that you know of? I just need five or four. Let's yeah. just pick four. One? Beans. We have beans. Beans are legumes. Well done. Another one. Please maize. Here. We have maize. Yes. We also have beans. Ah, 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 sorry, sorry. You said maize? Maize is a cereal crop. Thank you. Maize is a cereal crop. But we are talking about the legumes. We have peas. We have beans. Another one? We have ground nuts. And the last one? We also have green grams. We also have some of them here. But now, for the purpose of this lesson, we have prepared our land. We have uh, mixed our soil with manure. And in grade six, we are doing something we call organic gardening. Organic gardening. In organic gardening, we use manure. We do not use fertilizers that we buy from the from the stores. Because you are planting beans, and when you plant beans alone. We do not plant them two or three in a hole, the way we normally do. But because you are planting them alone, we, we prepare the land, we make sure the land is very soft. And uh, in our land, we cannot see stones. Why don't we have stones on our farm? Why don't we have stones on our farm, Tracy? Because we remove them. We remove them. Why did we have to remove the stones? You're very correct. Why did we remove the stones? Yes, James. So keep the... Uh... Uh, the light fertile. Make sure our, our soil is fertile. So, Another reason, yes? So that when the plants are germinating, they don't get hit and covered by the stroke. Well done. So that when our seeds are germinating, because they are still weak, they don't get crushed by the stone. Because they cannot germinate under that stone. Okay. So what we're going to do here, we've already made our furrows. Our furrows, we use this strip. So you can use anything wherever you are, even at home. You mark 30 centimeters apart. 30 centimeters is the normal ruler. That is the distance between the furrows. After that, when you make the furrows, you can use any item that you have around you. 
for our case here, we are using locally available potatoes. So we use this just as a piece of metal that we use. You can also use a stick, you can use as plastic, you can use an old spoon to make the farrows. Right now we are planting some yellow beans. When you plant the yellow beans or any kind of beans or seeds, what do you do? You must make sure that your seeds are free from pests. If a seed has a hole in it, it has a pest. So what do you do? You don't plant that one. You don't plant that one because it will not germinate. Yes? Why should we plant them far away from each other? Thank you. Why should we plant them far away from each other? Because each plant needs space. When it starts growing, it produces leaves. And because our soil is fertile, it has a lot of manure. What happens? It will produce a lot of leaves. And the leaves need to make food. So they need to be able to get enough sunlight. If they don't get enough sunlight, they don't grow healthy. Are you understanding me? Yes. Yes, very simple. Another question. Yes, James? Uh, teacher, why are earthworms so important for fertilizing? Thank you. Why are earthworms so important for fertilizing? OK, listen. Our soil, we have seen several insects when we were preparing the land, like earthworms, we also saw some millipedes. Those small animals are very important because they allow air to get into the soil. When they are passing through the soil, they make their burrows and the air gets in there. Plants need air inside the soil. You understand? Yes. So they are very important in our soil. So if you see that soil has a lot of earthworms, it means our soil is fertile and it is healthy for our plants to grow. You understand? Yes. So what you're going to do now, I want to demonstrate how we plant the beans. Now, within the furrows, our furrows are shallow because we are planting small seeds. And after we inspect our seeds and we find our seeds are okay, we plant them six inches apart. Six inches, you don't have to really come with a ruler just a, a little bit more than you are, the size of your arm, and your hand, you out to stretch seeds. palms. Here, there are two seeds, so you put one. You put one. This one is not a good seed because it is not straight. It does not look healthy. So what you do, you can even drop it there, but you don't count that you have planted it. It can germinate, it can fail to germinate. So we put another one. I now need to, I'll get some two boys and two girls to demonstrate to plant the ears. I'll plant my own line, they plant the ear line. Okay? So allow me to peek behind me. Just pick a lean. You're just picking a few people. Ah, yes, Tanya. You have your seeds. Another, let's pick a boy, yes. You can also have some. You can also have some. When you're planting, you can pass between the furrows. There is no problem. Okay? But don't don't step inside our furrows. Now, let's pick another one who has not tried. Yes, come on. Let him have a try. We are just doing with only four of us. After that, we can get another girl. Yes? Ah, yeah. ah let's give the one who has a gumboot eh, to try. Thank you very much for wearing the right shoes for the farm. Thank you. Now, let's pass. About how many? We have boys and we have girls. Eh? You get your six, uh, six, six inches, sorry. You plant your bean and you plant the big one. You plant the one that looks big and healthy, but it doesn't have holes. Thank you very much. We are done with planting our beans. Now what we are doing, we are now covering the we are covering our seeds. And because they are small seeds, how much are we supposed to cover them? A lot of soil or just a little soil? A little soil, because we need them to germinate. Then, we need to start keeping our farm records. We are now covering our seeds. Huh? I have covered the first one. So then, after here, we shall water them. Although our soil is not very dry, we can still water them. That's why we have some water in our watering hands. Yeah, you can also use your hands. You just hold your hand where I'm doing, and as you water, you move slowly. If you see some seeds getting out of the soil, you can, you can cover them. 
Today we have learned how to plant in a school garden. What can you remember? On today's pop quiz, name two steps in planting seedlings. Name two steps in planting seedlings. Remember to start with your name, the name of your school, followed by the answers. Otherwise, thank you very much. I hope wherever you are, you have learned something about how you can plant your beans so that you can get a good harvest. Once they germinate, we shall do the mulching and the other activities. We shall be catching up with you later. Oh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope also to see your names on the screen next week. Up next is our amazing world. We live in a pretty amazing world, so join me as we learn something new about the world. Hello and welcome to Our Amazing World, the show where we visit wonders of the world and learn interesting facts about them. What is 98 feet tall, has a 26 foot pedestal, arms that stretch to 92 feet and weighs approximately 635 tons? Yes, your guess is right. It is the statue of Christ the Redeemer, one of the largest statues of Jesus. The statue is located in the Chijuca Forest at the top of the Cocovado Mountain and is considered an icon of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. It receives nearly 2 million national and international visitors each year. The largest number of visitors received in a single day was 14,000 during the Easter of 2011. Its construction began in 1922 and was officially opened on October the 12th of 1931. The Brazil Catholic community funded the construction of Christ the Redeemer. The cost in 1931 was approximately 250,000 US dollars, which is roughly 3.2 million US dollars today. The original design, suggested by engineer Eto da Silva Costa, was a pose where Christ holds a cross in one hand and a globe in another. Brazilian artist Carlos Oswald changed the design to Jesus standing with arms wide open to symbolize peace. Christ the Redeemer was not actually built in Brazil. French sculptor Paul Ladonsky created the statue using clay pieces in France. It was then shipped to Brazil and remade with reinforced concrete and an outer shell of six million soapstone tiles by Brazilian engineer Heitor da Silva Costa and French engineer Albert Caco. It is believed that the workers who made these tiles occasionally wrote notes on the back, meaning the iconic landmark might be full of hidden messages. The statue is made to withstand wind speeds of up to 250 kilometers per hour. The Art Deco style used in designing Christ the Redeemer is characterized by straight lines and simple shapes. The head of the statue alone is said to weigh about 30 tons. The statue is gradually getting darker as the light colored stone used to build it is in short supply and restoration has had to be done using stone in a darker shade. In 2014, one of the fingers was lost when a bolt of lightning hit it. 
On average, lightning strikes the statue three to five times a year. On the 7th of July, 2007, the statue became one of the new seven wonders of the world. At night, the statue is lit by 300 energy-efficient LED lights. In 2010, the statue was illuminated with green and yellow to represent the colors of the Brazilian national team. Housing prices of apartments in Rio de Janeiro, even with the slightest view of Christ the Redeemer, are quite high compared to the houses in the same area without the view. For some, it is a work of art, while for others, it has a spiritual meaning. Nonetheless, it leaves a mark in all of our hearts. Until we meet again with more amazing... Southfield Mall.